Hey, welcome back to Judging Bouncing Balls. It is October 11th. Toby, how the heck are you? We're good. Real good. Good. Go. Up and running. Uh, yeah, exciting, uh, exciting couple of weeks of uh, whatever we've been doing. Tennis. tennis oh, it's is all, off, uh, always exciting. Yeah, sports in general. You know, you're always making friends with refs, and uh, we, we're having fun at the games. It's good. This past so week, I will we, say, did, we did real well with the refs. Yeah, real I was well. going to say, you didn't have any run-ins. There was, it was actually pretty pretty tame for the most part. I mean, you didn't have uh, any refs telling you to watch from the car or to watch it or keep my name out your mouth. No, but uh, <laughs> by you not being there on Sunday, caused a little bit of riffraff because Joe jumped on here right away. But, man, we uh, we didn't have any uh, – usually you're the calming effect. Hey, now – Hey, let's not go there. Well, between me and Joe, there was we were there. We were, and he Good. brought the vuvuzela, whatever it's called. He's oh. <laughs> oh, I love the vuvuzela. Vuvuzela is a good time, uh, and it's. Hey, I'm not going to be there again Saturday, so you guys are going to be running rampant again. So you're good to go. I got to coach Why football, you, man. Why don't you like us anymore? Please. <laughs> Come on, man. Hey, you after you told me I assaulted you, I uh I felt like <laughs> I needed some distance. Maybe I enjoyed the assaulting, you never know. <laughs> uh who who knows? But yeah, so man, we let's talk about state cup. We got off to a big uh a big start when the in the state cup tournament. Walk walk us through the uh the recap of the two games from the weekend. So we have a there's four teams in our division, us being included. Rust out of Kenosha, maybe Racine, somewhere down there. Uh, SC Wave out of Milwaukee land. And then we play this weekend, we play Elmbrook, which is out of Brookfield. And I don't know what the Elm stands for. Uh, but I always go into State Cup. I'm always like, oh, man, we're – I don't know if we're going to get out of this weekend. You know, I'm always, like, kind of, like, <clears throat> nervous about it. And then the girls hit the ground. And we beat Rush 2 nothing. That game was – should have been, could have been worse. Uh, mm -hmm. We had possession of the ball the whole time. So you knew you were going to win that game. And then we played SC Wave. We played SC Wave the weekend before we beat them 14 nothing. But rumor has it they were going to bring their GA team, which is Girls Academy. Oh. So they brought their, their uh, international girls or girls that travel. And uh, we beat them 3 1. Like, whoa, nice. way, to, way to bring the big girls, right? So we pick up six points. Um, Elmbrook and Wave each have three. We play Elmbrook this weekend. So as long as I think we don't get beat by two or three, or three or four, we, we automatically advance. So we're in a good spot. Okay. Yeah, we are in a good spot. You know, I, I was really impressed with the way the girls played. Uh, the passing was really good. I thought the intensity, the, the talking on the field was good. Obviously, I didn't get to see the uh, second game except for on um, – VO and live a little bit of the live stream, um, but no, I th I thought they played really well just from the you know, overall. I mean, there were so many contributors uh, from what I saw uh, getting involved, which that's where it's going to take. It's going to be a big team effort, so really nice to see them come together. Did get the injury bug a little bit? That was the bummer. Um, we're we're not deep enough to take a lot of injuries, so I'm really hopeful that uh, some of those girls can come back because they're they're we, we need everybody at this point uh, with only four subs, so. Um, hopefully we got, we're going to get Ava back and hopefully we get, uh, the, the sisters back as well. So. Yeah. Supposedly Marley went out Saturday with a, uh, a groin injury and then Addie took her ankle or foot. I don't really know, but I guess they were back at practice. So, um, I think they will be playing this weekend now. Um, Marley for sure. I don't know if Addie's, you know, what the outcome with her ankle or whatever, but. Hey, we we were down to one sub, and uh, yeah, <laughs> in this sport, I don't know if people out there know if you get taken out of the game in the first half, you cannot return to the second half. So the minute you're out in the second half, you're done for the day. So we had a lot of girls play a lot of minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I thought they all stepped up really well. Uh, did a nice job. So yeah, kudos to the whole team. Uh, had some big saves from the goalie. The defense played well. 
Um, you know, only giving up one goal in two in two games to high level teams. That's uh, that's a that's a really good job. So, all around good win. Hey, even the coaches did a good job, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's all I guess him. I mean, at the end of the day, singular yeah, coach. Suppose. The club the club didn't fare as well, I think, as it wanted to. We uh, I think out of the yeah eights, nines, eights, sevens, and sixes, I think we have. Who wins? And those are us. <laughs> and a tie. The Knights tied. A very good tie for them. But, yeah, I think the club was hoping for some more swagger going into uh, – because everything is in Appleton. You know, you want to represent. But, you know, I think there's still some opportunities for those teams to catch a win in a, in a quick loss by somebody, and they could make the semis. So, it was also homecoming. Yeah, and you know – yeah, that's that's uncharacteristic for our club. I mean, typically our club very competitive, even away tournaments, home tournaments. So it's just kind of an off weekend uh, for the for the club. But hey, it's going to happen. You, you can't. I mean, if you won them all, it'd be wouldn't be interesting. Well, and when is Spash had homecoming this past weekend? Right? Not this past. It was the weekend prior. Yeah, you know, prior. Weekend so prior. you the Kimberly, and then last weekend with Bayport and. Uh, I know North was the prior, so these girls are also juggling their socials, right? Because homecoming's a big deal. Yep. And Macy went, yep. and as did Amelia, and then you got to let them go. And but I was happy they all showed up for the game and did what they had to do. Yeah, no, they. they I thought we played well. I mean, you could tell in late in the game, maybe there was a little bit of an energy drain just from the lack of subs, but. Uh, overall, I thought they pushed through really hard. Energy levels were good, uh, especially considering one sub. Yes, and uh, homecoming is different these days, which is good than when I went to school. Um, we partook of different things, maybe had a party or something. But these girls are really good. They they follow the code, of conduct, and that's that's fantastic. Yep, that was good. It was really good. The dresses in this past weekend were very similar to the ones before. So, mm-hmm. yep, mildly disappointing. <laughs> mildly is a good term. It, there was more, than and that. I say that as a parent, right? As a dad, right? That that's the disappointing. Not not as in like, yeah. So, <laughs> still didn't change anything. They still all wore the dresses, and the dads were like, "What do you want me to do?" Are, are we, the dads are all like, are we still doing this? Really? Like, seriously? <laughs> Why don't you put on like a uh, a towel or a beach towel? Anyone want to take that along? A muumu, <laughs> something that covers neck to, <laughs> <moo-moo>. neck to <laughs> ankles. Uh, yeah. But then we play so, we got, what, Elmbrook Saturday and then semifinal Sunday. Now... There's a rumor floating around that I did hear that uh, Saturday is supposed to be 40 mile an hour winds and rain. So if they push the game, I would assume then we would play on Brook Sunday, and that would put the semis in the finals of the following weekend. Mm, okay. So is that is that a possibility? I had heard a rumor there's an opportunity they were, were going to meet <laughs> on it. I know they those fields get tore up pretty fast. So if but if it's 49 degrees and sideways rain and wind it's that's gonna be a rough day yeah i i'll I'll be honest i am not looking forward to standing in a youth football game coaching in that weather it was it's supposed to be 40 some degrees and pure rain and i'm like that is miserable conditions nobody wants to be there right the parents the kids i mean it's just like let's get out of here i was gonna take when do they do you know when since you're a since you're a board member, do you know when they make that decision? I don't, I'm assuming they have to make it by Friday noon, right? Because there's a lot of moving parts right. to get up here. Um, right. Now it says it says Saturday the 50 percent chance of rain, high of 53, but 20 to 30 mile an hour winds. So, uh, but it's in the morning only. So who knows? I I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what yeah. I, I don't know what's better. I don't think there's a better right. I mean, either way. You play Saturday or and Sunday, or you just play one game this weekend, and you got to go hard the following. So, 
Right. We travel the least. I mean, technically, besides you, we're all within, you know, playing at our home field is a huge advantage if you got to play back to back days. Right. It's the year before you huh. joined, we were down in Madden and we were in the Dells. And it was a hike. You travel down and back and then you got to go back down. And it's, it, it's draining for the kids to sit 10 hours in a car, you know, over the yeah. weekend. So, oh, for sure. For sure. We'll take any advantage we can get. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Uh, well, yeah. I mean, otherwise, uh, hey, did you see the video? Posted on our our Facebook page. Uh, the 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 one from the O nines. Yeah, the I hair? mean, yeah, I mean, listen, you want to talk about something kind of crazy? I mean, that's uh, that was that was kind of crazy. You don't see that every day, uh, where where you've got a, a player yanking a girl down by her ponytail. I mean, if you haven't seen this, you got to jump out onto our site. It's just not something you see every day, and thankfully so i did talk to jake our resident ref about it and he called it a guess it's something like he, the girl had a, a clean slate at the goal and she was fouled so it's an automatic red card she got right she was removed from the game i think she gets a one or two game suspension but it, i mean there's there's a couple youtube videos i think there's a girl out of like utah that plays college and and she was just throttling people like in one game, I think she got picked off the team. But when that's the one I talked when, about with uh, that's the one I talked about with with uh, Macro. Yes. With uh, Mar- yes. So here, I'll, I was going to see if I could make this a little bigger and show it. But yeah, I mean, just so people have an idea. I mean, you can see yes. she's like runs up behind, just yanks her down. And I actually, I give the the, the person who got pulled down a lot of credit. The she, she was. She just kind of said some words and walked away. I. I don't know if I'd have been that composed, <laughs> honestly. No. And I mean, I'm really happy that she didn't hurt her. I mean, you kind of think of Roy Williams. Remember when he started doing the whole tackling from behind and pulling in football, and you twist back on your legs. That can be a really dangerous play. Well, and you see the other girl in blue right closest to us. She kind of puts her jersey over her mouth and like, oh man, that's bad. Like they were all right. on like holy like what did you do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if that's if that's boys, I don't think it ends that way. I think it's a full yeah. full out fight, and I don't blame them. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, like I said, I, I haven't I haven't seen much like that before. That's that's pretty unheard of. But yeah, it did remind me of that girl down in um uh, uh, God, I think she was from New Mexico or Arizona or something like that. I, but she's just going around yanking everybody by the ponytail, and that was a pretty brutal one. But that's the one I remember when we were talking with Mackenzie, how just not good that was, right? That was a really black eye on girls' soccer. Some people thought it was pretty funny, but, man, that's that's not good. And then I saw when that got posted out, and it's kind of gone now, but another parent posted their kid it had the same thing happen to them in college. And it's like, man, alive, I, I would really hope that that girl – First of all, I'm, not, I'm glad the one didn't get hurt, but the other girl's got to sit out for multiple games. If that coach has any, you know, moral fortitude, that girl's got to sit down for at least an extra game. You got it. You got to go at least two, right? I mean, that was yeah. What I don't understand. So when I played rugby in college, if that would happen, like if you had a breakaway to score, and and I had a little longer hair back then, you know, it flowed over my ears, and I, I looked really good. At least that's what I thought, Bobby. But if I'd have got, if I, right, if I would have had a breakaway and I got pulled by my hair, they would have awarded the try. We'd have got the points, and then they'd have sent the player off. Yeah. So and honestly, yeah, I, I, I still a think a bad I, deal. Yeah, I, I, you almost wonder why. Why isn't that a PK? Or I, and did, did Jake say anything about that? Like, if it's the last person to beat, I know it's an instant red card. But she should have got a red card even if she's not the last because when you yank somebody's hair like that, that should be an instant red card. So last person to beat, it's like, what's the incentive not to do that other than you, well, you're right. booted? Well, and then you play a person down. Um, the So they took the free kick from where it happened, right? And they're not going to score from there. No, I mean, it's just over center line. 
Yeah. Uh, I here's the other thing. It, it made me made me think of. You know, I'm sure you watched the Packer game. That same thing happened. Watson's breaking away, right? Last guy to beat. Guy pulls him down. The only thing he can grab is the 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 horse, horse collar. collar. Gets the horse collar, and then they don't even score a touchdown because he it was so he got the penalty. But in the, in the end, he did the right thing because he stopped him from scoring, which he wouldn't have been able to do if he didn't commit the penalty. And that's kind of the same thing here. Probably saved a goal. Gets away with it. Yeah, she got booted, but she saved a goal. Yeah, and it's and the and it's in the Packers of the game, right? Because we had thirteen to seventeen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, it, it was it's just kind of interesting. So, you know, but Tim's got a good question. He just asked, "Do you think player behavior in our kids sports has changed immensely in the last decade?" Absolutely. You know, they said, I thought we had more accountability. I think our parents treated us like we should have been taught growing up when we did something like that. Now it's always the excuse of, well, you know, she was faster than my kid. What do you want me to do about it? You know, I think, I mean, if I'd have taken a kid out, my dad would probably have conversations with me, you know, about it. And I, I just think today kids get away with a lot more at home. So they, I think they act out more in school. Yeah. They're entitled. You might be right there. I, the only thing I, I just, the problem is I don't really have a lot of reference to think about. Like when I think back to all the youth stuff that we did, granted there were no refs there cause it was all pickup stuff that got kind of rough. I mean, the pickup stuff, cause it, you made your own rules. And so things got dirty, things got heated occasionally. Um, I, I guess the only things that jump out to me are things from the you know professional leagues, which is not really fair to compare, but I mean, those those leagues, in my opinion, are, were way dirtier back in the day than they are now. I mean, yeah. you think about some of the, I mean, think about some of the stuff that you remember happening, like Jack Tatum, like literally cleaning, like clotheslining dudes and taking their heads off. You got uh, the Charles guy for the Packers killing McMahon after the play. I mean, there was some pretty dirty stuff in professional sports, but from a kid's perspective, I don't know. I that I don't have a lot of reference to speak to because most of mine. I didn't have organized sports. We played pickup. And like I said, some of that stuff kind of got dirty. I mean, people did, you know, you have a little fight break out and you settle it on the field. <laughs> yeah. I, I do think that the parents have gotten worse, which in turn, oh, that I would the totally kids, agree. Which in turn, I think, has given the kids a green light to be worse. You know, we agree. You always, the parents, I think, have always been bad with youth sports, but. At the end of the day, the things that are happening now are terrible, right? You watch videos where they're where they're following them to the parking lot or the baseball. Yeah, it's crazy. Which I watched one the other day where it was a third base coach. He came running at the rat. He was going to tackle the umpire. Now the umpire moved and the guy fell and made an ass out of himself. But like, nice. what are like? And, and, and the problem that I have is it's all like U ten baseball, right? They're nine years old, like. What are we trying to accomplish here? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't get it. I, 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 I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I think I told you. I, I can't remember. I shared it on the show earlier, but early on in this, my youth area football here, that this was this season, we're like doing a scrimmage on against another team, and things are. I'm the only coach, right, for my team, so I'm trying to manage twelve kids, and I've got three kids sitting on the sideline, and you know, I'm trying to call plays and do it over over here. And apparently the kids were kind of messing around and doing something. I literally had a parent run in off the sideline. And unbeknownst to me, I'm like dealing with the kids on the field and literally started dropping F-bombs at these kids. Now, keep in mind, these are third graders. Three. And he's all of a sudden I turn and I see him, you know, F and get your start, stop doing it. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, I run over. I'm like yelling. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What are we doing? Like. He's like, well, they're, they're jacking around just being stupid. I'm like, why are you yelling at them? Well, kids are crying. I had kids crying on the sideline because he's like just some guy. And then I thought the kid that was crying, because I, I this is like the first week, and I thought that it was his dad. It wasn't even his dad. It was some random guy just coming in like off the off the top rope, <laughs> laying down the lawn, these kids. And I'm like, Man, I'm like, you cannot start swearing like that. He's like, yeah, but they're screwing around. I'm like, that doesn't excuse you to come in and start yelling at third graders. Like, what is wrong with you? Now, it turns out he was one of the dads of our kids, but I didn't even know who he was. 
I'm like, what are you doing? It was unreal. It was, but that's, was that's where kids are. Yeah. What goes on in your head yeah. where you would do that? Like, I'm going to go <laughs> and I'm going to help. I'm going to help out coach. Like, no. right. Un, unwarranted. <laughs> or un, unsolicited, I should say, not unwarranted. But no, no, were the kids messing fuck. around? Yeah. Yeah, they were messing around, but it's like, I mean, just come over and be like, hey, you want me to help like keep these kids in line? I'm like, okay, that's a little bit different than just rolling on the sideline and just start mowing kids down with F bombs. <laughs> so, you I know, know. When, I, when I when I yell at the ref or something, I usually do it in, in, in good humor now. They might not find it that way, but every time I've been scolded, I've stopped. <laughs> You have. I even apologized to one. I've said I was mm-hmm. sorry. Well, here's the deal with you. I honestly, a lot of the time you're joking around, but they don't know you're joking because I know you're 100%. joking half the time, but they don't know you're joking. And so they take it seriously. Like I remember the last time with Gary or Greg or whatever his name was, it's like, <laughs> you're, I know you're joking around. You're just trying to have fun, but they don't know that. And they're like, this guy's serious. He's amping it up over here. He's going to, he's going to follow us in the right. parking lot. Like they're taking it. Like seriously, <laughs> and if they and only knew. <laughs> well, I'm gonna get you a big foam finger so they can see you pointing that it's just me, <laughs> not you. Like you're like this guy, not me. I'm like I don't know what's going on. <laughs> uh, but anyways, but no, Tim. Tim is correct here. You know, like sometimes I think there are parents that just do get out of line and get and and, it, and you need somebody to just be like, hey, you can't do that, and that's I mean. Like I said, when that happened to me, I, I I'm not a very heated person. I was yelling. I was like, "This is not the time. This is not the place. Go sit in your car." Like <laughs> I was pissed because you you can't just come in and like start being a jack wagon. So yes, I do think that at times we need to tell parents like firmly to you know settle down when it's when they, when they get too out of line. I think that's okay. I I would yeah, and we do have a ref shortage. We have. <laughs> The the refing money that is being like everybody complains about their fees. They got to pay yeah. refs fifty to one hundred dollars a game now to get them to show up. Otherwise, why would they? So and three of them, not just one. Yeah, right. So and you have how many games? And so the the we're all paying for it. Um, yep. But I I like the some of the girls on on a girls team they got certified to be refs. I'm like I don't know if I want my daughter being a ref right now. It's brutal. Even when they're playing rec soccer at the local park. Dude, some of those are the worst too, because at least when you get into the the upper levels, at least, I mean, you and I maybe don't know as much, but some of the people know a lot. Like they, they, they understand the game a little bit more and they're not as usually not flying off the handle as easily. But I watch some of these like rec games at, or lower level games and, you get parents that don't understand the rules or understand, but like a tackle like that is pretty normal. A hard tackle. It, it is, that happens. Right. And so they just flip out and you're like, that's going to be a foul. And you're like, that's actually pretty a normal play. <laughs> yep. And so that's, I think that's definitely one of the, the harder things to actually do is what some of those lower level rec leagues, because you just, you run into a lot of misconceptions. Yeah. I mean, I, I, my daughter was coaching one of the youth seven wrecks and this I don't understand. And this is just me being maybe a little old school, but one of her players came really late. So they had to play a person down, which was fine. Nobody's keeping score except for everybody. Um, <laughs> and this little boy came and the mom, like walked him out on the field. Game was going on. Walked him on the field. He's like, all right, are you okay? He's like, I think so. And he's not out there 30 seconds, and he gets hit in the face with the ball. And there was a there was a mom, there was his mom, and then a mom next to him, and the mom next to him was like, "Hey, great job, way to stop the ball. Now let's go." And you could see the kids like, "All right, like hook it in the face, but I'm I'm okay." And his mom completely melted down, went and grabbed him, and that's when he's like, "I think I should cry." So he started to cry. And I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Like, leave the kid alone. He held him like a gunny sack and rocked him for 10 minutes. And then he's like, I think I want to go back in. And she's like, 
through that sort of pressure. She's like, do you think he's got a concussion? And the mom's like, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think he can go back in. And then she let him in, and she literally stood on the sideline and waited, and just waited, waited for anything to happen. And I'm like, oh, my God, your kid is in so much trouble. Like, your kid's going to get this, – this, it's going to be rough. Eaten alive. Yeah. I, I wish I could find it here. I, there's, I actually just watched something on that. I won't, I won't show it here because it doesn't translate well. But I'll tell you what, there's a – you know, from a parent's perspective, and I, I think you would agree with this as well, we have got to, got to start letting our kids fail more. And we've got to be okay with them working out of rough patches that that you'd love to be able to solve their problems for them. But at some level, A, they need to be in those situations because they learn a lot from them. And then B, they need to just figure their own way out. Like you can help give them advice maybe, but you can't do it for them. They've, they've got to do it themselves. They just, they 100%. have to. And I think club sports in general has to be able to say, you know, this isn't for you. You know, instead of just, taking and taking and taking. There's a lot of levels of different things. I think sometimes you got to be able to let a kid go and be like, you know what? You're better off down here to, to grow into this. And here's how your pathway mm-hmm. is. And I think our, our, I think our club is doing a great job of creating pathways for kids. Um, yeah. We're not just throwing kids like you want to be on the best team. Here you go. I think we're the club does a nice job of saying, you know, you're the third team is a perfect spot for you right now to play with kids like you. Your goal is to get to the second team. In two years, right, right, and I, th- and I, th- I think we're doing a nice job because there's a lot of clubs out there where you watch on the internet, and it is just kids sitting on the bench not playing, and then people bitching, they're paying, they're traveling, and yeah, well, and, and that's you know, Tim makes you know made that point as well. His parents always took the coaches and ref side, and that's kind of what you're referring to, right? Is and held them accountable to, hey, you're not just going to get things handed to you you got to go out and earn it. And I think that's kind of what he's touching on. And I, I totally agree. I mean, there was nobody, man, nobody took my side when I was a kid. They were always, it didn't matter. Like the, I remember kids in my kindergarten class getting spanked, like legit spanked in public school. There was nobody, there was no going home. Like mom, they're hitting kids. They're like, what'd you do? Why'd you ask for it? Were you acting out? <laughs> it's not, they weren't like, Oh, you poor thing. <laughs> I'm going to talk to that teacher. It was like, well, you better not, you better, I better not hear you're getting a spanking at school or you're getting one at home too. It's like, son of a gun. <laughs> I'm getting beat everywhere. <laughs> we had, we had legit nuns that would hit us on the on top of hands with rulers. Yeah. I've heard about that I, too. I deserved it. Me and my, <laughs> me and my buddy, Ben, we were at a Catholic school in Green Bay. St. Thomas Moore, and it was on a very busy road. And me and him went over to the busy road and tended to have seizures. Smart. Somebody Smart. calls classy. <laughs> Got pulled out of class. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> oh, ne- never never did it again. On the uh, busy road. I will say this. Yeah, on a busy road. Uh, I, I, let's, I'm trying to think, I remember getting spanked twice in my life and I can definitely say both times I deserved it without question. Now I'm not a, uh, physical punishment type guy as I've grown up. I actually do think there's, in my opinion, there's ways to do it and have raised good kids without having physical retribution. But I'll tell you what, the times I did it, I can understand why I got my butt beat. <laughs> I, mean, I still remember, I still, actually, I remember three times, my mom and I remember my dad twice, but I remember one of the ones I walked in the house. You remember we lived, we grew up on a farm and my mom was the type that whenever she would, you know, make food or vegetable, you know, make the supper or whatever, there's always bits and pieces of the vegetables that are not used, right? You throw them out to the chickens or whatever their waste. Then you kept them in a, in a container, like, and you would keep them in a container for like a week and then you throw them to the chickens, whatever, like. And I remember I got so pissed at my sister one time. I walked into the kitchen with that. I, and I, I was pissed and I saw it outside the house and I grabbed it. I walked in and I turned in the kitchen and just did a full circle with the waste pan and just threw that garbage, gooey crap all around the entire kitchen. I just spun and it just went everywhere. 
And my goodness, I got paddled for that one. <laughs> and I deserved it. <laughs> it was bad. But you know what? I never did it again. <laughs> it's the key. Let me ask you this. So, you know, we talk about refs, um, refs and coaches taking a breeding. You know, you're you're in a school district. When did, when has a parent come into you and said, trust you over my kid? It doesn't yeah. happen. You know, and I think that's happen. the whole society in general. And that's why, you know, clubs have a tough time keeping good coaches or, you know, it's, it's, I don't, but I don't know if you go, yeah. how do you get back? I don't know if you can get back. You know, you know, what makes it hard too, is because parents have kind of gotten such a, they've gotten so vocal and I'm just going to speak in vagaries here. So I'm not speaking from anything at school experience or anything, but parents have gotten so vocal about their displeasure with a coach or with a program or whatever it might be that you almost hesitate now uh, that if there's a lot of, you know, like calls for a, a, a coach to be resigned or a coach to be fired, you almost try to push back the other way because you don't want to encourage parents to do it again. Like there's a, there's a little bit of you that's like, nah, we're not, even if the coach is not great, you're like, nah, we're not going to, we're not going to adhere to this because we don't want you to think you can just run a coach out of town. And next thing you know, that's that's all you get is just constant complaints to run a guy out of a, right, a guy or a gal out of town because you don't like them, because your kid's not playing enough or because whatever. Because yeah, it's become so prevalent now. That's just you know, and I don't get the emails. Like, you know, that's the AD that gets them, but I'm sure, and I hear from him occasionally. It's it's a tough gig. There's there's parents that kind of become a thorn in your side because they view things a certain way. And they're not comfortable enough to just let things play out and let the kids work through the, the tougher times. It's always somebody else's fault. It's always whatever. Yeah. So. It, 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 it's going backwards. It's a, it only gets worse. I don't know what it takes to go backwards. I'll think of our school district in Green Bay. And I think sometimes you just, somebody's got to go in there and just lay down the law. It's going to take a lot yeah. of. A lot of lawsuits and a lot of headaches, but at some point we got to get back to parents. Like I had a good friend; his daughter was at the YMCA, and another girl flat out ran into her. This plan, and the mom jumped up and ran over to my buddy, and he's she's like, "Oh my god, I am so sorry, I'm so sorry." And my buddy's like, "What are you sorry for?" Well, your my daughter ran into yours, and he's like, "Let's just be happy that my daughter didn't punch yours." That's just, and, and, and she was appalled and he's like well, I don't know that, let's just be happy so I right. punch my kid and he's like well I don't know we were lucky it didn't happen so <laughs> I don't know is our generation yeah. the, at fault for this I I'm trying so. to figure that out I, I, I do too I don't know there's so it's much very of it disappointing. Comes from, yeah I mean I don't know. It, my wife and I talk about this even with our own kids. I mean, we sometimes feel like maybe there's, you know, we look at certain things where we're like, eh, wish our kids would do X, Y, or Z, right? Whatever it is. And you're like, in the end, we're like, man, that's kind of falls on us. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. it just, it sucks to say, but it's the reality. If, if there's something you're not super happy about with your kid, it's probably your fault. <laughs> 100%. 100%. Yeah. And I, and, and, We've bottled my oldest because she was diagnosed with type one and we reeled her in early. And so you take care of her differently. My other one, Maisie, she's grown up on her own. I mean, for yeah. probably a year with dealing with diabetes, we passed Macy around to aunts and uncles and everybody. And we were dealing with our other daughter. So she's kind of learned. I think she could live on her own right now. Yeah. In fact, I don't know why she doesn't get out of the house. Sounds amazing. You just have them move out at the same time, both of them. That would be great. If you're going to college and you're just going to go get an apartment. Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll get an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> no. You don't want to you don't no. want to miss out on all that. Who wants that life? No. That down down quiet time. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, I, I know I, there's, I think there's a lot of blame to go around, but man, I do think 
things have got to change. I mean, it just in general, it takes sports out of it society wise. I mean, just, there's got to be some more personal responsibility. We got to start stepping up to the plate and saying, you know, hey, that, that we're responsible for actions. We're responsible for our families. We're responsible for a lot of things. We can't keep passing the buck to everybody. Oh, Tim texts me. He says he's not allowed to chime in. You didn't shut him down, did you? No. <laughs> That's weird. I wonder why that would be. Yeah, I huh. don't know. Yeah, no, I, to... I didn't. I didn't change. The only thing I did was I liked his posts. I mean, that was the only thing I did, but I didn't shut anything down. That's weird. Maybe that's why nobody did, uh... comments anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I just assumed yeah. nobody wanted to watch. <laughs> did uh, any Spash girls make it to tennis for the state? Yeah, we uh, we actually just sent a pair down today. Um, you know, it's terrible. I should know their names, but I forget them right now on the spot. Um, they're not students Make I've had in up. class. Nobody's gonna know. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're not. They're not students I've had in class. So then it's always a little bit tougher for me. Um, but yeah, we did have two a pair go down uh, to state, so they were excited about that. We just had a golfer go down. She finished 39th, I think, out of 78, so right about in the middle. Um, had a had a nice run. You know, I mean, she was uh, she was. At the beginning of the season, there weren't people 100% sure that we'd have anybody represent the state. So the fact she got there was really awesome. Uh, she had a really nice season, golfed really well, uh, and did did good down there. So you know we're we're happy to send the two 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 tennis players and the golfer so far. And then we have you know swimming looks like it's going to be promising possibly to send a few people down, maybe even the team cross country girls. We might send some send a team. We might we're going to send boys. Football's you know seven and one one conference. They're going to be eight and one here. So because we're gonna, we're not going to lose to Appleton West. I, I mean, I, God, if we lost to Appleton West, I would be amazed. Uh, they're having they're having a lot of struggles at Appleton West, wow. and I really hope I really do hope, and I say this in earnest, that they can right the ship and get back on track because it's it's not good right now. It's it's rough. Yeah. So yeah. That, that's all that's I know. They great. had a coach step down, coach step down last year, and now they're, you know, struggling. But yeah. So, anyways, how's how's Bayport looking? You guys, what, how many did you send? Do the whole team? Oh, wow, no, we sent the. Uh, so we took third. Uh, we took some <clears> losses <throat> early in sections, but we sent our number one doubles got an invite, and then our number one player is ranked nice. two in this in the state tournament. He's a freshman. Oh, he's phenomenal. He's oh, that's the one that you guys recruited, right? Yes. Yes. Um they they got a really nice house. Um yeah, and I think I they got they got two cars. They wanted a couch. Mm. So we had to go back to the boosters and get a couch. But for the good of the okay. sports. Oh yeah, no, that, that's is you gotta do what you gotta do. And by the way, the names are Rylan Wojtasek and Addison Janderin. Those are the two names, so of our our, nice. our tennis players. Yeah, we're sending a uh, uh, freshman and <laughs> senior as number one doubles. Anna Ernest yeah. and uh, Mia, uh, the freshman is coach's daughter. Right? Her name escapes me, and then probably Shock is phenomenal. She's I think seventh in the country in her age group. She was designed that's, to play sports. That's it, huh? Hmm. Yeah, struggling, struggling to break the top five. <laughs> Struggling at, four, wow. at 14, it's hard to, but it's, uh, it's, I, I there was a girl out of Manitowoc, Olivia Minicole, or Liv, I think they call her. She came up and played Carly in our match, and it was some of the best tennis I've ever seen. I bet you hmm. there was a hundred people watching, the news was there, oh, wow. and they, they banged the ball for two hours, and it went six four, and then four six, and then in a super tiebreaker. Olivia Minical won 10 or like 12 10. Like, hmm. she's a senior. Jeez. So, I do feel bad though, because I feel bad that you, you know, you have in sports, especially individual sports, right? You, you bust your butt and you're a senior. Like, this is my year to win it. And then along comes freshman. <laughs> it starts throttling people. It's so amazing. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Well, and, Actually, speaking of freshmen, I, I heard in the, uh, the the golf tournament, there was a freshman that came in fourth, and apparently she's like, 
unbelievable, like really good. So they're saying she might win two, three state titles by the time she's done. And and get this, guess who won the state, the girls' state uh, division one golf tournament for state champion? Is that uh, the daughter of uh, Wisconsin? Steve Stricker. Steve yeah, Stricker. Steve Stricker. So yeah. it was it was uh, Izzy Stricker, which don't get me wrong, she's obviously really good, and I give her a lot of credit. But talk about having some advantages. Your dad's like a professional golfer. You, you know that she probably had every kind of training she could ever want to have, not to mention, yeah, a, a few good tips from old dad. It's like if I was like the greatest, if I was, you know, Ronaldo or whatever, and I could teach Amelia how to play that way. <laughs> so well, that's a little unfair. So the freshman at Bayport, her mom played professional tennis, came through Stanford. Hmm. What do you, you know? know? What's, what's, what's amazing is as far as I went in sports, Without having that, I mean, I didn't. My parents weren't any special. And look at me. Uh, you're talking. I know eighth eighth grade soccer, probably top five. I mean, we probably only had ten kids. Um, basketball, I scored maybe six seven points a game. Maybe I don't know if I was. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of unheard of what I was able to do with my talent. I mean, in the in the words of uh, Frederick Douglass, it's not the heights you've risen; it's the depths you've come from, right? Yeah, it's more of my height that was my problem. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Joe asked a good question. Why isn't the news at State Cup? I mean, what the hell? Do we need to call the news and tell them? Sometimes you actually have to tell them, like, hey, there's a cool thing happening. You should be here. Um, That's a great thing. Why don't we have the news at State Cup? Um, we should tell them, like, hey, there's a lot of, a lot of good high-end talent here. I tell you what, if we get to the championship game, we should we'll make some phone calls. Last year I put it on the radio on the fan 75 the fan rookie uh announced that we were playing in our for our third state national team and then we lost. So so it was rookie's fault. Not, so rookie well, absolutely but obviously uh, I think we could get channel 13 CW there. Do they have news? Oh, you know what you should do? Here's what we do. We call up Fox 11 and we're like, hey, just so you know, WBAY is going to be there. I, I just thought maybe you guys would want to be there too. <laughs> Play them off each other. Just right. call everybody. Right. Hey, uh, by the way, these two news stations are going to be here. We thought maybe you guys would be interested too. <laughs> just to be fair. Just to be That's fair. We want to be balanced. <laughs> right. Actually, we should like just six. have to pick up, the, pick up the feed and put it on TV. There you go. There you go. Except for Which, you're not I, there, then we shouldn't. Because me and Joe don't. Yeah, of course. Oh, mm. uh, no, it's good. But but by the way, I was looking up this week. I know the VO is the clubs, and we can't, like, you know, pilfer off of that. But, God, that's a really nice angle. That's a good view. You can really get a good, like, bird's eye, like, see everything, and the image is so clear. If there was a way to pipe our little audio into that, that'd be nice. Well, if you talk loud enough, you can easily hear it. No, those jerk wagons mute it. They do, and there's a reason why. I know it, why. It's on, it's on the parents. It's on parents. Because when you were in Detroit and I was texting you, I'm like, oh, man, I can hear everything. <laughs> yeah. No, understood. Uh, and, yeah, so you, <laughs> you don't necessarily want – uh, all that broadcasted, but yeah, I was looking to see is there a way to like hook up a a Bluetooth microphone to it so it could just pipe just in what you have. That'd be pretty amazing. There's not, by the way, but if there were, that'd be pretty sweet. I know it showed up on my Facebook feed was one year ago when we did the dual cameras. Yeah, remember we broke <laughs> yeah, it into two screens. <laughs> <laughs> and you were walking with a camera, and we we're. We did. We were talking. We're like, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. And then it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't. It just made it worse. It would have been nicer if it would have made it like split a little bit better so you could, but it was, it made it the screen like even narrower than it was. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. It was worth a shot. It was worth a shot. But I, I will tell you this I do have the capability on my laptop that I'm using right now. If we had auxiliary video cameras, I have the program that we we could like 
let's go to camera two and you could like flip it over. I have it. Like we could do it, but we need Wi Fi for really good Wi Fi to be able to stream from the laptop out to everything else. And then I could literally go from camera one to camera two. If we had four cameras, I could we could get a close up on Coach Drew, like grimacing and John at the refs. I mean, we could do all kinds of stuff. We just need cameras and camera people and you know, we can make this work. Well, if, I, if anybody wins the Powerball and they want to give us some money, that'd be great. <laughs> a lot of things are going to happen. So I didn't buy yeah. a ticket. Did you buy a ticket? Maybe. Damn. I bought one like five turns ago and I didn't win. <laughs> Sub- surprisingly. $1.7 billion. What do you get after taxes? You're, you, you know that. About a billion? Well, Billy? You, if you take the cash out, you're going to get about 800 And then after taxes, you're going to be about 450 ish Something like that. $450 million. They take $1.3 billion in taxes? No, 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 no. So if you take the cash payout, it's always half of about, about half of what the actual pot is. So if you take the 20-year annuity, you'll get the $1.72 billion over 20 years. If you decide to take a lump sum cash payment at the beginning, you only get about half of what the, the pot is. So then you, you only get awarded like 800, let's say 800 million. Taxes are going to take, you know, 350 of that because they're going to tax you at the max for both state and federal. So you're going to you're going to get down to about 450 million. Yes, because I heard they take in, they give away a dollar for every two they take in. So they've already taken in 1.7 billion and now they're going to, yeah, I'm that, taking the annuity. That, I'm taking it all 20 years. <laughs> I can be fine. I can hang out, put in a trust. Well, the good news, the good news about taking that is at least, you know, you've got money for 20 years. <laughs> you, That's you my blow point, it all, right? You blow it all in one year. And you're like, just waiting for that payday, baby. You go rip it on a heater and you're broke. And then you just sit <laughs> like, right. Like you're like, all right. October October 11th. I got to get to October 11th. October 10th, they're knocking at your door like, your lights are due, your mortgage is due. Like, give me one day. And then, bam, $100 million. You're like, I'm back, baby. (laughs) I think that's the way to go. I think maybe. You might be right. But I will say this. If on the off chance that I'd ever win, I was thinking about what you could do to maybe offset the taxes. I think one of the things I might do is donate a whole heap of money to the local school and have a Castleburg sports complex now be built where everything is now like remodeled of the high school, put everything on campus. So it's all right there. Oh, that'd be so good. And it would just be the Castleburg family complex. It'd be pretty amazing. You'd walk around with a top hat, wouldn't you? <laughs> I would be the Monopoly guy. I'd get a monocle. <laughs> It'd be it's hilarious. It's funny because everybody talks about, well, you need to, you don't want to turn the ticket in. You want to get your attorney and you want to get, blah. dude, I would run the next day to the camp. I'd be like, here it is, suckers. Pay me my money. I don't know if I would do that. I would. I think I would plan a little bit. <laughs> Planets for losers. Remember, all you gotta do is go 365 days. It's true. It's true. Imagine uh, you blow it and you, you you take a bank loan for year six and you're on year four and you're like, I know it's coming. <laughs> I tell you what, though, I'd have fun with it. There would be uh, some pretty amazing things I would do for the uh, the community. It'd be pretty fun. I, we'd build some pretty cool stuff. I don't give my kids any of it. Good no. Job. Look at me. They don't need it. I made it. <laughs> that reminds me of, there was a podcast I was listening to of a celebrity that, who's fairly well off. I mean, they're not crazy, but they're, they're like, yeah, our, our kids asked, are we rich? And they're like, I'm rich. You're not rich. <laughs> I think funny. that was Shaquille okay. O'Neal said that too. <laughs> yeah, His kids asked him and he's like, he's like I'm rich. You're I'm doing rich. great. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but no, it, yeah, Joe's right. There would be ice cream for everyone. I will say that. There'd be an amazing ice cream party. Amazing. Yeah, there'd be a deal. There'd be a deal. Nothing's free. There'd be a, 
There'd be a deal. We'd be driving that thing over. I, gas be damned. I'd be driving it over every weekend. Just Damn. loading up the fans. This is the greatest ice cream truck on earth. <laughs> it just shows up in free ice cream every day. Yeah, it'd be pretty amazing. You could you could force somebody to run it. Oh, yeah. I would still do it, though. I, I think it'd be kind of fun. But I'd start a lot of different businesses, man. That, that'd be the problem. I'd be starting all kinds of stuff. It'd be good. I don't think I'd start one of them. I'd buy them. They're already running. That may be true. Then yeah. Run them right in the ground. I'm back <laughs> next year. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, I I have a lot of things I would love to do. I'm telling you, one of the outside of the spash thing, like remodeling spash, the other would be. I would love to do a sports complex, like a private, like, like the champion center, something like that. That'd be really fun to like manage that and run that. It'd be a good time. I would enjoy that. You would need that. Kind of, I, I, we were talking about tonight because uh, Greg came to practice. He said that the GA girls Academy moved their soccer showcase from Arizona to California. And I said, I think that thing in Mesa, Arizona is underwater. I think they're, going broke some of these complexes really? they're building. Remember Grand Park? We did the episode on the Grand Park. Yes. They're financially struggling. I, I think these people build these things and think it's going to be so amazing. The Def, Beth, the, the the Champion Center, now they have sheets of ice in mm -hmm. courts, and you can't find sheets of ice. So that's right. where the money is. They're expensive yeah. to put up and expensive, but people are willing to pay hundreds of dollars Correct. an hour to rent them. Yeah. But yeah, no, it's if you, I think if there's enough, you know, I think the challenge with like a Grand Park is I got to believe there's some more in, in mm. Indianapolis that have competition for field space. Like they're not the only thing in town. I think where like the Champion Center, where granted they're not the only thing in town, but they're one of the few, it gives them a leg up to be able to charge what they need to to make the, the lights stay on. I think we would go there for volleyball. Like the summer league, it was ten bucks a time to get in. Hmm. You know, you get three hundred people a night. That adds up. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, it does. I mean, it's no forty-five dollars for the tournament, but <laughs> hey, <clears throat> we'll, like we'll I told, on. like I told one of the parents, if you make it, if you win, that forty-five dollars is a steal. Steal, but if you lose, mm, nothing to steal. Not so much. So, did you lose your piece of win, paper? Baby. Uh, no, we still have them, amazingly enough. Yeah, I put mine in the shelf and I told everybody, don't touch it. That's $45. Just win, baby. That's all you gotta do. Just win. Just win. Yep, win and move on. Yeah, nice. I don't know what else? To all right. About. We're all over yeah, the you know, I, I never thought about, uh, I never remembered what my unpopular opinion was. I had a good one too, dang it. I had a really good one. It really frustrates me. You got one? I've been frustrated lately. But it's more like there's a lot of bad drivers. Bad drivers. And I just don't get it. Yeah. It's not even unpopular. Well, That's just my opinion. No, that that's very true. And the thing that's driving me crazy right now is semis driving in the fast lane really slow. That one that one never ceases to amaze me. It's like, if, dude, you're supposed to stay in the left lane. And especially when there's three lanes of traffic and then they're in the third lane, it's like you have no excuse to be in the fast lane on three lanes of traffic. I don't know what you're doing. Get in the, you have two lanes to pass. Get over there. Sorry yeah. to all the truck drivers out there. I, I appreciate you delivering all the stuff that we want. but. For the love of God. Who in the right who in the right lane? <laughs> yeah. For the love of God, stay in the right lane, please. I was talking with some friends on some text that I got made fun of because I said I was gonna go with a little electric like leaf blower, and I got an electric edger, weed eater. Nice. And uh they 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 called me names. But Why? What's wrong with that? It's not manly gas stuff. I don't know how to change oil. I don't know how to do anything. I plug it Dude, in. I'll tell you what. I have an electric leaf blower. I have an electric 
um, uh, uh, like chainsaw. I have electric, like, like you get up and cut off the, the extension to cut off stuff like limbs and stuff. That's the best. First of all, you don't have to mess with any of the oil crap, except for on the bar oil. You do have to do that, but you don't have to do anything like with the weed eater. I, I'm out there with that dumb steel. I still have a steel weed eater and you're like constantly yanking on it to get it to start. I put the battery in, it just goes. Like, I don't have to. I'm with you. Uh, it's so annoying. So you can tell them to pound sand. That's, <laughs> that is the, uh, like, honestly, I love that stuff. I have ego, and I love those things. They're great. Yeah, I don't know what, what flavor I have, but I got the weed eater and leaf floor and the drill, because it came with a drill, which is but, nice. Yeah. I do have a steel leaf floor. I am mm-hmm. constantly trying to figure out what this on button is, and I'm constantly pressing yeah. it. I'm just, and it, it doesn't go. Yeah. So when they pull their back out trying to start that dang thing, you can tell them what's up. Because uh, you never have to do that. You just push done. a little button. Push the button, and it's <laughs> done. <laughs> and it's nice, too. It blows everything. I would like a lawnmower, though. The big zero-turn electric. They don't give those oh. away. They don't. Uh, we're going to need a lot more sponsors of the show for that to happen. <laughs> like a sponsor. A sponsor. <laughs> we got we to gotta start somewhere. Right. We can't get to two until we get until one. Until we get one. But it's, uh, yeah, though, those things are, I mean, I think I looked there like 5500 bucks. They're crazy expensive. They, yeah. I mean, even, even Joe Scherer can't afford one of those for his lawn care company. He needs something to go fast. He cuts the lawn so fast. He makes more money at 42 miles an hour. I apparently. I don't even know if he's cutting at that speed. I think he's just driving over it. Just mowing it. Just just knocking it over. Which, by the way, the field looked good. I, I Then the VO, it looked good. Yeah. Had a nice line. Well, the plus, there's, there's no rain. If we'd have rain, it would be green. Yeah, Sorry. Right. I'm still glad it's I'm still glad it's grass. I don't want the turf. I know it's That's good true. for some things. I don't want the turf. One point two million dollars for a football field now turf. The yeah, right that sounds about right. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that is crazy. I mean, we could triple our fees and get a turf field, or <laughs> not not do anything and keep it grass. Correct. I do. I do say though, if they do decide to go with the turf, I know it's probably more expensive, but I would love for them to get that instead of the rubber pellets. They get the uh, the one that has sand and natural fibers. I think that'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'd be better. Too many instances of uh, weird weird illnesses coming out of some of these fields. So. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah. The loss but of an that's eye. Another, <laughs> that's another show, though, I guess. We got time. Let's talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, that's been an hour. This is great. Yeah. No, good stuff. And we, we did kind of bounce around a little bit, but we, we hit some good good topics. We hit the lotto. We hit the uh, hair pulling. We hit the uh, you know, high school sports. All kinds of fun stuff. Notice the switch from turf to grass because of rubs. Yeah, Bakhtiari quit. Yeah. Or well, did, what did I? What did I hear about him? They they said he actually has to basically have his knee redone. Like yeah, it's he's like, done. Yeah, I, that's not good. Well, he's got to he's got to be cut or resigned because his contract is a forty million dollar cap hit next year. That ain't happening. No, it's not happening. But no. I, you know. They were complaining about the whole turf thing with Rodgers, but I will say this. I, when you watch Rodgers get injured there, I don't think turf saves him. I don't either. I, I don't either. I, the way it wasn't that he like got right it, on the verge of letting go. It was like it, this. The, yeah, the dude was like on him. I, I don't think turf saves him. Maybe, maybe the turf gives way. Maybe, I guess it's possible, but I think he blows it either way. But Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of one of those where turf gets kind of scapegoated, but I don't really know if it, I don't know. I don't know if it really matters. So 
I think Jordy Nelson's knee when he blew it on turf because he was all alone. That was bad. That was grass. Was it grass? Yeah, that was grass. That was in Pittsburgh, wasn't it? Was it in Cincinnati or Pittsburgh? I thought it was grass. Hmm, that's a good one. Not Maybe my wrong. brain is playing tricks on me. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Talk while I'm doing this. <laughs> I hope I'm right. I don't want to be wrong. Well, nobody wants to be wrong. Let's be honest. The Packers aren't going to go anywhere this year. Next year. Next year. We're no. Back. Oh, for sure. It's always next year. Let's see. He tore it in 2015. I don't, I'm not seeing where, where it was at. Right, turf. I don't know. Huh? Probably turf. Yeah, probably. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? But anyways, yeah, so yes. in the end, it's never never a good situation, but I, I can't remember where, where exactly he tore it at. If somebody knew, that would be that'd be amazing. But I'm sure Joe doesn't know, first of all. <laughs> I saw Joe at the Packer game. Very impressed. He was not paying attention. He was interested in the cocktails, and he was having a good time. Of course he was. Didn't care about the game. Yeah. Well, it's a good time. It, it was a preseason game at the Steelers. I did find that. But I, I thought they had grass. Heinz Field? Or now it's something else? Or is it like our, our Packers? Our, yeah, I think it's a hybrid. Did you see our schedule came out for National Pro? No. We play Athens, Georgia, a Germantown team from somewhere. And then I forget who. But our last game's at noon on Sunday. And it's too hard to change our flights, so we're going to stay with Monday. When are, when are we supposed to fly out? Monday morning. Oh, yeah, that's why. No, why? Then why are you saying you need to change your flight? Well, because we play at noon, so technically you could probably fly out at seven o'clock. Right oh, now. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, no, I, I didn't catch that. Yeah, they. Uh, sorry, I'm jumping around here, but they do have they have similar field to Lambo. It's natural glass, uh, and then it has. It sounds like it has those fibers or whatever. Synthetic turf. So yeah, it's like like interwoven to hold it together. So yeah, I mean, anyways, it is what it is. We are going to dive into this national pro on one of our episodes. So we're going to get somebody on like that knows what what it is and talk about how this thing works because I still don't understand it. I, think well, I hope it's somebody smart. We're spending our money. Who who are you thinking? Paul knows. Paul. Paul knows <gasps> all this stuff. Paul, let's get Paul. Paul's really smart. Why doesn't Paul join us anymore? Is he mad at us? So his daughter's got training. I see Dusty's joined us, but Dusty might be training his daughter, which is gone to one of them's training. But yeah, he used to be all part of it. Oh, he doesn't even care. Hmm. Hoping for a How do you see who joins us? Something, but he, well, it says in the comments. Really? No kidding. On the Facebook page? Yeah, I didn't see that. It's on my phone. Interesting. Wow, that's pretty see, cool. Right here. Shows all the comments and all the people. Wow. How many that's people? Pretty nice. Five. I look on my computer. Five. <laughs> hey. Jackson five. Well, that's good. No, I honestly, I, yeah. I, I would love to have somebody on to talk about it, especially anytime we can bring on intelligent people onto the show. I think that's probably a positive because... We're lacking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I could tell more stories, but I don't want to go to jail. The past <laughs> is questionable. Questionable at best. Yeah. We have different, different paths getting here. You're right. Yeah, well, yours is questionable and mine is just boring, so nobody wants to hear that. You're... You, you're driving down the middle lane. I'm over in the, the rumble strips and hanging <laughs> off the wall. And 
Uh, so maybe we do Dusty and Dusty and Paul. Little club representation, and then the little little. And then we they just argue? we just say, you just say you duke it out. You guys put up your dukes, and we just sit back right? and just watch it unfold. I'd be like, I think Paul's daughter should play more. And then you'll be like, she's terrible. And then they fight. Oh, that'd be great. <laughs> that would be pretty good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> so, oh, we could talk right. about our fields. Yeah, I like it. Well, good. Hey, uh, let's uh, plan on trying to connect again next week. We'll put something out on the on the book face to say when we're going to be. Um, Stay when we're going to be on. Toby's always really good about that. So thanks for jumping on and joining us. Uh, if you got anything interesting, send it over to the show so we can post it or talk about it. That'd be awesome. Something. Or hit like or share. Um, or you, or also, even just tell us. That's that. or, or just tell us that you hate us. That's fine, too. Dude, hey, press is good or bad press is still press. And that's true. And that. we'll, in class yeah and we'll totally just go after you on our show then so that'll be fun yeah speaking of that is there anything to make fun of i mean is is this amherst done anything bad or kimberly or it's really kind of been quiet kimberly football no i mean i want i mean kimberly got beat which is like like the galloping ghosts i mean can you imagine getting beat by casper ouch Ouch. I can't believe they still allow the ghost uh, the ghost to ride the horse. You see that? We have a real horse that runs down the middle of the field. Really? Yeah. At home games. Do they ever is do they have a turf field then? I'm a, I'm sure they do. Most of them do. So what's the protocol if that thing just drops a deuce right in the right in the middle? Like, do you have to sanitize the field, or they do when that girl threw up? They just walk out with some water and just kind of dump it on it. Like, well, problem solved. <laughs> I think I think we talked about that, but that was still one of the great things of of regional soccer ever. It was COVID, right? Yeah, and, and well, I mean, one was, of the girls on our team threw summer. up. Yeah, one of our girls threw up, and they literally like came out in this golf cart and they stopped the game and told everybody to get away, and they're like. And they're like, okay, back at it. <laughs> this hot intestinal juice all over the field, and they're like, let's go with it. I forgot about that. That happened to one of our players. I was talking about in St. Louis when that ref puked in the middle. Oh, yeah. This happened before you joined us. This happened. We were down <clears throat> in, at the other field on turf, and one of our players puked, and they came out, and they're like, like and this is dead hard of COVID too. Like everybody's like afraid of dying, and then they're like, "Okay, let's go." People were running <laughs> in it and they're just sliding through so it so bad. And it was the same <laughs> protocol this year when that ref puked. They kind of just <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're good. They didn't even spray the right spot. He sprayed no, like they didn't. five feet away. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. Like, so, yeah, what is the what is the protocol? Like, I just saw Eric. What know. is the protocol, Eric? If, if somebody throws up on our field, like, are you supposed to sanitize? You kind of just mush it in. I mean, you're not going to stop the game. I mean, it's just puke. But are you supposed to do something with it? I I imagine you're just trying to wash it as much as you can and kind of kick a little dirt on it and move on. I don't know. Whenever I see guys puke on, I've seen guys puke in football too. That's kind of they just whatever. Change fields if possible. Really, For really? a little bit of throw up. Wow. Hmm. Okay. When was the last that time be... anybody changed fields? Dilution. See, dilution. That's the key. I love it. You get the specialist where you go, and that's diluted. They bring out that same stuff that they spray on their legs and when, when they get hurt that just magically heals everyone. They're like rolling on the ground, spray it, 
dude's up and running. I don't know what, what that was that crap is. in high school. It was like a numbing cold. It was like compressed air. Something breeze. Something breeze or whatever. Yeah, I remember your like ankle that. would hurt, and they go, they'd like freeze your ankle, and they'd be like, "Get back in there. You're fine. <laughs> You're fine." I'm like okay, okay. He said they changed fields in 2021. Wow. Okay. So it has happened. I didn't know that happened. Yeah. Is that like a, a quick change where they just change everybody and the parents are still waddling over to try to watch and the game just starts without them? <laughs> yeah, I wonder what the time constraint on that is. Do they just keep a running clock while it's going? I'm sure they do. They keep running. Was Chunk, Chunk City. We'll just Chunk get a City. shovel. Somebody, somebody blew chunks. There's a joke about that. Chunks. But yeah, I just, you know, I don't know. There's a lot of weird things that happen in sports. Yeah. Huh. It's weird. Weird stuff. All right. Now we got another topic. All right. We're going to. Yeah, here we go. Hey, have a good night, man. Zamboni. We'll have to talk about that too. People puke on the ice. All right. Well, you have a good night, man. Thanks, everybody, for jumping on. Thank you.